Oh, hello. Afternoon. Afternoon, yes, it is. <laughs> right. It is indeed, just about. <laughs> Had to think about it. Hope all uh, is well, guys. Hope you're all having a good Monday. Um, There's already bucket hat chat. Love it. Bucket hats have been ordered, by the way, for those of you that bought one. Dirty, dirty dogs. <laughs> all right, so we're going to run through... Um, we're going to run through a little intro where obviously we're joined by our special guest, Gareth Rufluski. Well, thanks nice for joining us, Gareth. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's, let's just get into it. We're going yeah. to do a live lesson. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about some of the things, um, the nuances of, of the work that you do. And I think, to be honest, most of this people will never hear before. Mm. I think that's fair to say, isn't it? I would, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm fully expecting uh, uh, a lot of stuff to come out of this that people will never have heard of, uh, how to use bounce, how to use loft, mm. set up positions. We were just running through some, mm. some different kind of positions, different shots there, and you just don't hear that stuff. No, it's fun. You know, it's just, it's just years and years and years of being on tour. And yeah. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of shots. <laughs> I know. And <laughs> thousands. And, and messing you know. with, isn't it? It's a lot of trial and error and going, wow, that, that works well for that shot. Absolutely. You know, the first time I've you know, given a chip and lesson, you know, it wouldn't be totally different from everything that I would say yeah. right now. Just Absolutely. Just and every, every day you're learning a little bit more. And then yeah. having the advantage of having world-class players to be mm -hmm. able to go, can you hit this shot for me? Yeah. And the thing about it is, they can do anything you ask them to do. I know. So you yeah. actually get some real data. Sorry, your mic's broken. Yeah. Oh, okay. totally my fault. All right. So as we kind of go, Brandon and I will Sorry. be uh, we'll be running through obviously the questions, um, and we're gonna we took a load of questions yesterday on yeah. our Instagram. So I think you'd saw a few. You yeah, yeah. Some good ones in yeah, there. Yeah, some right? some crackers. Some some perfect. Really good uh, questions. So. We will run through that. Can we just make sure everyone can hear Gareth now? Because I I just had to change his mic. Let's see. Can you hear me? Uh, Gareth isn't mic'd up. Oh. Can't hear Gareth. Yeah. Now he should be. Yeah. Let us know. Is that good? Is it good now? Can you hear me now, guys? See first, 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 Dean is saying it's good. It's good. Maybe they prefer not to hear me. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, then they're tuning in for the wrong reason. <laughs> <laughs> so two, no, they just want to see your accent. swing. That's the problem. We'll get two dodgy accents <laughs> in the building. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do those guys <laughs> say? Live, we need live captions. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So the uh, <laughs> feedback is loud and clear. So good. We're okay. All perfect. Good. Gonna hit a couple just to warm up. And sure. So what are, what are we doing? Do you want me to move the green to? Yeah. Why don't we do just you know a little thirty yarder? Probably nice. start off. You I'll know, like um, nothing too fancy, and we can kind of work our way. We can work our way up. I like that. Perfect. Perfect. So, Matty, boy, this has been. Uh, this has been your sort of almost your winter project. You've done a little bit of stuff, obviously, in our uh, instructor series with, with Tyler. Definitely, yeah, in Orlando. Um, so, but, you know, mostly, mostly what length of shot were you guys looking at with that stuff? We hit some, well, most of the time I was hitting longer shots, like when we worked together on the range, mm -hmm. closer to 80. We did do the one video on 50-yard shots, right. which was a good eye-opener for me. Yeah. But if I'm being totally honest, I did not work on my short game, like, at all over this winter. It's all been a full swing, so mm. this is uh, much needed for me. Good, good, good. <clears throat> we can confirm, Gareth, you are not Welsh. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, uh, uh, Gareth is a Welsh name, but uh, no, I am is not, I I'm not where, uh, Welsh. So and Rafleski is not an Irish name, no. So uh, the amount of times uh, <laughs> I get in, in the week what part of Ireland are you from? <laughs> is remarkable. Matty, what wedge are you starting with here? So this is my own wedge. It's a 5808M grind, Titleist okay. SM7. Okay. We're using Bridgestone Tiger Ball. Matty went with a fresh haircut today just to get a little more aerodynamics. Just for you guys, yeah. <laughs> Built for speed. It is the year of the aerodynamics, right? Very nice. So the big thing that we're going to try to do now for a lot of the guys is try to get the right contact point when you're touching the ground. Because, gotcha. you know, a couple of them were thin, a couple yeah. of them were fat, you know. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to look at is basically your angle of attack. Where do we have uh, that Let me throw there? a dot on this wedge. Do, do we want the full face? Do you have any dotted wedges I can just grab? Um, oh. No, pro just, just throw some on there, pal. Um, so I think, we're, I think if we can figure out how the club is coming down mm -hmm. will be able to set your body in the right position so that basically if you imagine a plane landing 
that that plane is touching down right. at the right point on the runway every single time. Gotcha. Um, so if we can figure that out, then we'll know where to position his body to get that right strike. What uh, groove number did you want on Before these? you get deep into this, uh, yeah. the feedback is uh, Gareth's mic is a little loud. Hot. Uh, and mine's a little, little quiet. Maybe I'm a shouter. No, no. It's just, it's a different mic. I we will make some adjustments, guys. Bear with us. I'm going to pull up some questions from yesterday. <clears throat> um, I'm just going to drop this slightly. Yeah, let's give it one second. What's the bounce on that club of yours now at the minute? This is an 8-8. Eight, eight. Eight yeah. Talk to us a little bit about bounce just while we're setting this up, guys. From what do you see uh, from, from your players? What's the range you like to work within? So it all depends on the type of turf that you you know that you're generally playing off. If we're talking like a 60 degree and you're off firm turf, then obviously I'd be more inclined to go down to the four or six eight degrees of mm -hmm. bounce. Yeah. Um, if it's much more softer conditions, probably a, a bit higher. Keep it up a little bit. But I think the, the the interesting thing I think with most of my players is what I do is I flip. Uh, I either have one high bounce, one low bounce between their wedges. So That's the key, isn't it? Their gap wedge, or sorry, their uh, low wedge is four or six degrees of bounce, then we'll go 12 or 14 on their sand wedge. So now they have two very different wedges as they enter the turf. Matty, the guys can't hear Gareth. Sorry <coughs> guys, we'll, uh, let's see if we can get this. How about now? How's that there yeah. now? Is that better? One more time for me, Gareth? How are we doing? How's that there? You should now be able to yeah. hear Gareth. <laughs> and if you just missed that there, that was an amazing piece of information. <laughs> Hi, sorry about that. <laughs> it was a good. It was a very good. Piece um, no, so basically what we were saying is that the players and the good players that I have generally go very low bounce um, with with their lob wedge because obviously with lob wedge we're trying to go high. Yeah. Um, gets it down lower to the surface of the turf. We can hit higher up on the club face. Okay. Gotcha. And now we can launch it higher. Uh, we go with fifty six with uh -huh. a bit more bounce. We hit it a little lower on the face. We're going to nip it a little bit more, yeah. uh, but the interaction with the ground is going to be totally different. You and recommend do you tend that to find too. that with the yeah? I mean, we 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 talk that as well. The versatility between the two. And do you find that with the more lofted wedge, Gareth, that there's a lot more manipulation of the face angle, open square, open square. So you're always playing with that bounce. So you're you're never really taking that one and losing bounce, but you're certainly adding bounce by opening it. 100%, and, and that's the nice thing, you know, every degree that you open the club face for loft yeah. will generally add about one degree extra General of bounce. Of yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, so if we get a lie and you need that tight lie, but you're like, boy, I just, you know, I need to get it on the club face a little bit more, mm -hmm. I need a little bit more forgiveness, right. then just open the club face a couple of degrees. Yeah, gotcha. And that'll give you, you know, if you have an eight degree bounce and we open it, you know, two degrees, mm -hmm. now you've got 10. Gotcha. Open at four degrees, now you've got 12. So now you're up to actually almost a high bounce club. Yep. That's the problem I think some people get when they get into a really firm turf, <coughs> mm -hmm. is they're trying to play that high shot, but they're actually opening the club face. Oh, so you're really setting yourself up for a failure. Yeah, because now the club, the club will literally hit the ground and bounce and hit into the ball. Huh. Yeah. Um, see if Gareth's levels are better now. I, yep. As far as yeah, I can see, everybody everyone's happy? Everyone's happy with it. <clears throat> Sounding good. If the makers of Rode microphones are listening, you have some work to do. <laughs> All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to intentionally hit two inches behind the ball. Okay. So Change nothing but try to No, hit. no, I just want you to duff this one as good as you can right behind mm -hmm. it about two inches. Because once I get you hitting the ground a bit more consistent, because we want to take away those thin shots, you know, yes. they're, they're no good. Gotcha. Um, and then we can actually start to use the bounce a little bit more with that club. Would you rather see someone have a miss that's fat than thin? Yeah, because I can just add some bounce and then we can add a little forgiveness, a little skid. The thin one, you know, we're coming up, we've got, a lot of times we have a lot of like lengthening and shortening in our arm radius. Mm -hmm. So now all of a sudden, you know, you've done this here on the way back and then you have to extend or pull back. So now it's very hard to time where if I can get you hitting the ground, you're generally going to have long arms. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things I would ask people if they're struggling with their chipping and contact, yeah. just hit a couple with long arms. Right. Okay, so two inches behind the Yeah, ball. I just want you hitting behind this golf ball. Nice. Good. Then we can start to get some contact. Now we're just going to change. Go ahead, set up for me one more time. So I'm just going to change one little thing. We're going to put you right here. Hmm. And if you can show the other camera there, if it's possible. Yep. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to go from having you know wizardry. quite a bit of shaft lean here that's where i started yeah yeah okay. to now going into something a little bit more neutral that's going to activate the bounce right away gotcha. it'll also make the attack angle a little bit more shallow so mm. now you don't have to be as perfect Okay. as you're coming down there. Is this kind of like your stock pitch shot? Yeah, shot? yeah, and I would even just, don't be afraid to go the other way. This will look like a flip to everybody else, yeah. you okay. know, but a well, um, if you know how to do it, it's actually a really super controlled shot. Gotcha, so I'm almost gonna feel like my hands are behind my ball. It will, definitely. Nice. Like the sound on that there, that look, should be a little yeah. more spin on that one as well. <clears throat> just yep. sounds like it anyway, I didn't even look. Yeah, launch came down, spin went up. Yep. yep. Very nice. Now from that neutral position, mm -hmm. okay, just open the club face just a tiny bit. There you go, just even less than that there. All right, okay. So we just added a touch more bounce there. Go ahead and hit two inches behind it. Nice. Obviously it's gonna launch a little bit higher because we've just added some loft to mm. it, you know? But I wanna give you the freedom to hit as far behind this as possible. Gotcha. So kind of there-ish? Yeah, yeah, perfect. And yeah, don't be afraid to slap the ground before it. Like that. Yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> yeah, I do tend to, I think what you were saying before is quite a bit what I feel. I kind of always feel a little hesitant yeah. at the ball and I sort of try to feel like I'm gonna strike it, but I'm usually on the thinner side. Well, that's the thing, we wanna take that away. I wanna want you to feel so comfortable literally just smacking the ground. Right. Like, you, you don't even care. You don't And let's so. just figure out, get the hands back a tiny bit more. There you go. Okay. And then go ahead, I want you to hit way behind this ball. A little bit more loft. Uh, Gareth, Michael uh, is, is sort of raised the point, how much do we get caught up in spin loft numbers and, and how much a player will de loft through the strike when we're working on, on this type of thing? How much are we really relying on uh, you know, angle of attack versus dynamic loft? I think just because of the way we play golf and a lot of people not doing a lot of short game stuff is that everything we've ever practiced in our whole life yeah. Mm. Is, is down to, I wouldn't say very little about angle of attack. Yeah. It's more that as a good player or a player that's practicing a lot, we're really trying to create those good angles. Yeah. In short game, it's not really going to help us that <laughs> much because as I push this club forward, we have no bounce anymore. Yeah. So that means you have zero forgiveness. If you don't hit it perfect, mm. you're, yeah, you're done. Yeah. So I would say, what I do with a lot of players, I teach them how to hit say 46 degrees, 50 degrees, 56 degrees of dynamic, mm -hmm. just so that they can start to utilize the bounce and okay. understand that it's okay for that club to pass you. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't always have to keep delivering it like this So you're not year. trying to hold on to angles? Not, not at all. When I show people this at the start, they're like, you want me to flip it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that because, you know, anytime, you know, I would work with someone who would really struggle with that, you know, I just go into the bag and grab out the eight or nine iron. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start hitting little lofted pitches, even into the bunker. You know, if you get that player who's struggling to use the bounce in the bunker, okay, let's start playing it with yeah. with uh, with low loft. Then you'll mm. start to open it enough. You'll start to use it because you need it. Absolutely. And then let's give you the you know the the lob wedge or the sand wedge back in, and it's yeah. amazing how high then the ball comes out and. They're, they're using the club as, as designed. Yeah, you know, it's brilliant. And that's a great transition as you're working through seven, eight, nine up onto your wedges. So for this one here, obviously we're just going pretty neutral. And, and I am encouraged, maybe ball position up a touch in your stance there, perfect. So we have it kind of basically in the middle of him and the shaft basically going straight up. So no forces gotcha. there. And the hand's just back a little bit more. It'll feel super awkward. Okay. And again, I just want you to hit a couple inches behind. Nice. And that's one of the things that people forget is that I actually want the club to touch the ground a couple inches behind. Yeah. You know, mm. you do not have to hit this perfect. We were talking about this before, Ian, mm -hmm. is in testing, I can hit the same shot <laughs> and hit five inches behind, which is slightly bigger than a hole, yeah. and still make contact. No, it's not great contact. Yeah, yeah but it's... <laughs> but I can still chip it onto the green. So the players that are duffing it and just bumping it forward, they're not doing that at all. They have the opposite effect. They're... Oh, okay, so it's not so much that, like, I, I, that's really actually a good point, because I would always think the worse you are at chipping, the more fat you're hitting it. But you're saying it's all the degree of bounce and leading edge interaction, the difference Just gives you, it things. gives you a, a, a larger runway to land your plane. Gotcha. Yeah. You that's know, fine. the wider you can make that runway, the easier. So a little bit up in your stance, hands back, and go ahead and really hit behind it this time. Nice. 
Obviously, the further he hits behind it, the yeah. shallower he is, the more loft it's going to be, the more it's going to launch up into the it's air. It's funny, I'm still hitting six down on it. Like, it feels, <laughs> it feels really scoopy, but it's not at all. Yeah. Interesting. So here's the magic test. Okay. So you're going to move it all the way back. It's going to be right on your front foot. Ball position's totally incorrect. Okay. You can keep the club right in the middle. A lot of people are asking that, Gareth, about, uh, about handle position, and, and is that something you like to see more of a vertical shaft angle? Uh, for a basic shot. For a basic I, shot. I yeah. think it's probably not straight up and down. Yeah. I think it's probably just got a little bit, because we have to imagine when we come through to impact, it's actually going to have a couple more degrees. Sure. Yeah. So if I'm starting ahead here, I'm probably going to have an impact that's probably even a few more Tiny. degrees. So now I'm... Now I've got no bounce at all. Go so on. if I start at neutral or even slightly ahead and I move it maybe a couple of degrees ahead, yeah. I'm still utilizing some bounce there. Right. So here's a little test. Okay, so pretending the ball's here, obviously. Just hit it. Just hit it. Yeah. Pretty easy. Wasn't sure where to put now, my if you can, if you can do this outside, mm -hmm. that means that your attack angle versus the bounce, those combinations are really nice and that club is sliding. If you can make contact yeah. in that position. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. if you're chunking it, obviously you're using a lot too much. Because what I've done is I've set them into an absolute incorrect position. Yeah. This is not something I would recommend for mm -hmm. anybody. And hands not so far ahead for me. Okay. Here? Yep, and then just go ahead and swing. We can hear that nice sound, and that sound is basically you touching the ground yeah. way before the ball. Super air, right, right. And that there is going to allow that club to still skid through. So I actually hit up on that slightly, it's saying. Yeah, it was because it was crazy. totally the wrong position, but you were still okay. able to to manage that shot. And and the biggest thing, especially for the player who really struggles to make contact, right. this is showing you you have a massive amount of forgiveness That's if true. you know how to use the golf club correctly. I picture, I picture this is my impact area, mm -hmm. but in fact I had like eight, nine inches of, of turf. Yeah, and that's often what I'll, what I'll test the players. What we're trying to do is make that runway longer. Mm -hmm. So I have a little board I'll show you in a bit there. And if I can get them up to six, seven, eight degrees of landing space, mm -hmm. then that widens the chance for them to hit anywhere there. And okay. anywhere, as long as that club hits the ground before the golf ball, it'll catch the golf ball at some point through there because that's basically the flat zone. Yes. So as it's coming through that flat zone and then at about seven, eight, nine, it's starting to... Mm. Rise up, and gotcha. Dwayne's asking Gareth that when the ball, when the turf is is sort of soft and, and wet and that type of thing, are we are we sort of modifying the the setup? Are we are we changing things slightly? We don't want it to gather as much moisture. I assume on the way in with that two three inches behind the ball. Yes, um, there's a couple of things you could do. So I would say there's um, you could probably open up your body. Yeah. So by opening up your body line, so if you go ahead set mm. up for me, I'll, I'll demonstrate with you. So. We're going to turn you so you're almost trying to be a bit more open. Okay. So what that, and ball position a little bit back. Back, okay. Yep. Yep. And now what that's going to do is it's going to have a little bit more, because the face is open, we're going to have the bounce, so we've got the forgiveness, but by putting it back and a little bit more open, we're going to create an attack angle yeah. that's just a tiny bit okay. steeper. Yes. So now we're still utilizing the bounce, but the club's going to interact nice with the turf. And we're going to push that low point a little further out in front of the strike and just change the yeah. contact a little yeah. bit. I feel like you. I had less actual time in the turf on that one. Yeah. Like it, it felt ground, but less. And that's exactly what you're saying. With that soft, yeah. real soft turf, yeah. we can't be hitting four or five inches behind in that yeah. because it's just not going to work. Is that true of like Bermuda grass and like sticky grass yeah. also? Yeah, absolutely. Setup? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hopefully, Centenary saying good luck with that on a, on a sodden golf course. Hopefully, that's you know just showed how you modify that and you know. This isn't, this isn't something that we're saying every time you ever set up to this shot, you have yeah, to do it this way. There's, there's modifications to all of it, but we're starting with a basic. For sure. Basic. Yeah, yeah. but it's a great question because, you, yes, yeah. you, you know, we're going to get out here pretty soon to play golf. If you grow up, you know, in, in Europe and it's, you know, soggy at this know, time. And, true, yeah. you know, and a lot of times you're thinking, boy, I'm, I'm doing something really terrible. We had an interesting one there at the Honda uh -huh. um, on the PGA Tour with, with one of my guys. We were off uh, number 18. Yeah, and I, saw the, I saw this pitch shot, I think. We had, um, so obviously when it rains, all the water's gonna come off the golf course and it's into a huge big drain. Yeah. Like, so we come, we come off the green and we're like, oh, let's hit a couple here. And my guy on the PGA Tour, chunk, chunk. <laughs> and he's looking at me going, what? what is going on? What is going on here? And I said, that's because all of the water is coming off here. 
all of the grain yeah. is going down towards the drainage hole. I says, let's just take two steps here. Now, the other one went this way, mm -hmm. and obviously all the water was coming off that part of the green. Nothing was coming off here. I says, chip a couple from there, bang, spin in, bang, spin in there. And he's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so the big thing for us was there's, when we get to that spot, putter. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, great, so great you, point. you just need to change. But, uh, yeah, yeah exactly. because <laughs> it, was, it was so <laughs> grabby <laughs> that it made no sense, or hybrid, yeah. it yeah. made no sense to actually chip that shot. That's good. Yeah. I like hearing that from, obviously, that you're working with a tour player, and there is a time when you literally just have to pick a putter yeah. or a hybrid or fairway and just take your medicine. I thought it was him at the start. I said, <laughs> I said, give, me, I said give me your club. You are? Give me that there. <laughs> and I hit one, did exactly the same thing, and I'm like, oh, uh, never, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you probably know how to do this better than That's me anyway. That's hilarious. All right, so back to where we were. Mm -hmm. So handle a little neutral. Okay. Okay, good. Just pull that net so it stops. Um, not to segue off too much for you boys, but um, when you're playing these types of shots against the grain, Gareth, how do you guarantee that strike a little bit more when we're against the grain? So the biggest thing is, is on your golf club here, there's going to be catch points. So as you're coming through, so you're either going to have a catch point from leading edge, which mm -hmm. we kind of talked about. So the more the handle goes forward like this here, the more leading edge that we have the more it's going to grab. So obviously taking that leading edge off the ground, a little bit of bounce, opening it a little bit will also create a bit more bounce. And then the last thing is pulling mm. the heel yeah. off the ground. Yep. Oh. So the, in, in both of the clubs, doesn't matter how you're swinging through it, this heel is actually super sharp yep. and it is designed to dig. So okay. when we're playing certain shots, maybe hard pan or yeah, something. Yeah, in the bunker, a hard pan, we'll, we'll lay the We will actually down. lay the heel in there yeah. so it actually oh. digs. So the toe will have less friction yep. as it hits the ground. So setting up so that we pull the heel off the ground mm. will allow the toe to kind of glide through a little bit. There might be a little bit of grab there, yeah. you know, mm. but, but a, a little bit less. That's cool. And then also managing your attack angle mm. so that you get the correct attack angle. If it's too shallow, it's still going to grab. Definitely. And that, that's interesting to talk about that, obviously, with, with the way that you know, we use Titleist, for example, some of their grinds and the, the mm -hmm. toe and heel relief. And some people might wonder why is yeah. that? Why is that relief all the way out there? But yeah. it's utilizing the full, the full area, the full surface area to hit those different shots. Oh, for sure. Because, you know, my club literally could be all the way from, if you set up for me, mm. from a bunker shot, which would take a wider stance, even like huge, wide, wide. Right, right. Yeah. Massive, massive heel dig. Yep. So if you play anywhere where it rains or it's really hard packed and yep. you know you've hit those shots and you're, and then all of a sudden you're like, damn it, yeah, yeah. there's no sand in here. Yeah. It's because it's so wet right. that it compacts. So if you can use the leading edge here without opening it, because if you, if you lean it down and open it, you just add bounce. Right. And it's going to bounce, so you have to kind of have the handle super low. So get in that position. Is for that me. why people uh, recommend closing the face when it's plugged? It digs because it will yes. dig in. Yeah. Okay. So what we would do is we would go here. Yep. So not really super open, but yeah. Super and low and hand. you can just go ahead and hit like a little chip shot and let that heel dig in there. <laughs> ah, it's okay. Yeah, You'd really be surprised it. how much yeah. that goes underneath. Mm -hmm. And what it does, it'll bring that contact point nicely up on the I face. I can feel that for sure. Yeah. I mean, actually, you can probably measure that it came up higher. Yeah, so that would be our first one. And then the last one would go ahead set up for me again, but we're not going to do the opposite. We're going to actually have it. Okay, you raise the handle that much, eh? Yeah. And you can have the hands forward here because it's a bit awkward there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good. And then you just kind of make a similar, similar type Same motion. swing, just pull the heel off it. So if you've been having trouble with that there, I'm going to fix something. I left Manny to do that there because one of the things that most people do not do with their wedges is if you set up your normal swing for me. Okay. So he'll be a certain height here. Mm -hmm. Now, if he goes to hit a little chip shot, generally he's going to actually sink down. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because so your, your whole level comes lower. Your whole level comes down. And if you've gripped the golf club at the end of the club, yes. this lie angle is completely oh. off so now the strike location on the face gets in close to the heel mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're gonna shank okay. the odd one right. so we need to go all the way down to the grip and so when you do that what you were mentioning you want to grip down we have time. to change it because we want that lie angle 
Okay. We want that heel off the ground yeah. even more if you can. So right down me. to the steel, basically. Yeah, yeah. Now go ahead and be aggressive through the turf. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's really crazy. nice. That's crazy. Really different than it. Love that. Um, Gareth, on with your players, um, sort of, and generally better players, same shaft and wedges as irons. What do you like to see? Mine's are a little bit different. A little different. Um, I would probably throw that back at you. I haven't yeah. done as much right. on. I've done a little bit, but I certainly wouldn't be in the same ballpark mm -hmm. as you. And that's why, you know, like for coaches out there watching this, that's why you need. You know, we can't be everything. Absolutely. We have to yeah. know, we have to stay in our lane. And then I, I, I go to Ian or I'll call him on the phone and say, hey, I'm having a player that's struggling with this here. Can you recommend something? Because that's your world. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, we generally like to see um, a progression of, of slightly heavier, slightly softer. Yeah. Things that you can utilize as you change the length of the club, you mm -hmm. change the, the obviously the uh, velocity, you, you're going to still want some feedback from, from the club itself. So. Generally speaking, uh, we like to say. Hey, Could use this as an example. So my wedges, you you told me to get 130x. Yep. And my irons are 120tx. Correct. So the change in the profile of those is the 130 as a profile. Even if you look at the both x's, is much softer in the tip mm. section. Right. So I think we done nine iron 130x. So we actually oh, soft okay. stepped and went with a softer tip profile right. to try and. Uh, bring a little bit more feel back to the shop. Gotcha. Um, so cool. I, th I think it's important to to do a little bit of that testing and and then yeah. see you know what it is. I mean, there's there's no uh, it's no coincidence that S400, which is pretty much the heaviest iron shaft out there, is the most used wedge shaft you know mm -hmm. in the in the market. Hmm. Yeah. Heavier and softer. Yeah. You like that little shot there with the that heel one. off the ground yeah, with the low hand. Felt like the middle of the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me try that again. Yeah, I like that a lot. It, it makes sense, though. I mean, but don't be afraid to hit the ground. Like that's okay. the biggest so I'm, factor here. I'm still here. trying to like pick. That's all right. You don't need to. You can just throw it at the ground. Hands a little less. Here. Yeah. Mm, that's yeah, nice that's there. The more I think, the more I try to pick the ball, the more I get a mixed bag of both. I get a little bit of thin and fat. And that's why I'm trying to get people encourage people to hit the ground. Yeah. Like learn what it feels like when you make contact because. Unless you go and chunk a few trying this here, you're never going to learn. And if sure. you're always picking it, like yeah. if you're picking it clean every day, like that is a hard way to play golf. Yeah, it's unlikely that you'd be consistent with that. It's just, it's, it, there's too much stress. What's really interesting is that nearly all my tour pros that I showed, every one of them chipped like this here yeah. when I started with them. Okay. And, Ball back, hands oh, forward, yeah. PGA and, manual. And you know what, they could, do, like they're awesome. They can do anything you ask yeah. them to do. Right. But I just showed them, you know, neutral hands, nothing fancy, you know, yeah. and, just a fairly shallow swing, you know? Yeah. And I was surprised that nearly all of them said, why would I not do this all the time? Um, and I was like, oh no, stick to your own. <laughs> you don't change it too much, you know? Just showing you some different shots. Oh, yeah. And they're like, but this is way easier. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. your margin for error, even for the best player in the world, why would you introduce it? You don't oh, have to. Yeah. It is, it is. And, and that's the whole thing with short game. It's very situational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm going out with my tour pros, um, I'll be out with them and they'll look at a lie like this here and they're like, Gareth, do I do this and this and this? And I'm like, yes, but if you did this as well, you would also produce that shot. So let's try both of them and see which ones are working for us. Because yeah, right. as you're traveling from different grasses and different conditions, we also need different wedges and different okay. you know, setups. Um, a lot of my girls travel and guys travel with two wedges. You know, so based on what based what on happens? the conditions, yeah, you know, so high bounce, low bounce kind of yeah. thing, or grind yeah. different, uh, exactly same heads, exactly same length, exactly same width, just different bunches. Huh. One more question, then I want to leave you to, to do some sure. work here because I don't want to get in the way of, of, of the lesson. But uh, weight distribution left to right, mm. 50 50, what, what do you like to see? So, this varies so much from a player to player to player because if you have if you're someone who generally sticks it in the ground, avoid having weight on your lead leg. Yeah, yeah. Avoid it. Yes. Okay. So I had a player once, um, very steep, good player, has a lot of like lag in their hands, and I had them playing bunker shots 80% mm -hmm. on the back foot. Really? Because what that did is instead of them coming down like this now, now they were able to deliver the club and mm -hmm. actually release the club. So if you're, if you're kind of shallow, Get your weight on your lead leg, yeah. 60, 70, oh, okay. 80%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're the opposite, nice. then you're actually going to have to migrate a little bit mm -hmm. back. Then you have to manage ball position so you yeah, can manage low point. That. Is that so, something that would change over time? Like, let's say I, 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 I am this person 
if I work on this for a while, does my delivery slowly change and then yeah. I become more neutral again? Yeah, after it does. After a period of time? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's a drill to some degree. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. That's the more cool. you do it, the better it is. Yeah. It's cool. So I think some awareness of who you are, mm -hmm. you know, the type of player you are. Are you are you often hitting behind it? Okay. Well, let's scooch it forward. Are you often hitting? You know, the ball then kind of sculling it across the green. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we want to get you back a little bit. Just playing with that low point, shifting it back and forward. Yeah, That's we've been so generic with everything that you know you've generic, ever heard. Yeah. It's like sixty, you know, sixty forty, what whatever. Reads in the magazine is the same thing. The, the kind of heat map of your foot this way. Yeah, they have to do that there because they have to do a very generic, yeah. you know, basis. And it, you have to think about what are the things that are happening as you're entering the turf. I'm yeah. I'm way more interested in how the club touches the turf mm -hmm. yeah. than it touches the ball because if we touch the turf correctly, the ball takes care of itself. Yeah. Is it true that it's pretty rare, just even from like a scientific standpoint? Is the wedge ever really going to hit the ball first? Like no ground contact at all? Can the can a wedge on a flat lie? Is that even possible unless you blade it? No, you want to be hitting. Yeah, very unlikely. So something is touch. Like on a high speed camera, you're seeing something. You have to be touching. You know, one to two inches. Really, one one inch behind is super low on the face. Super right. low. Because okay. well, even I mean, even if you're hitting the ground before, your low point is still out in front of the golf ball. Because it's below ground technically. Well, think about that eight inches of yeah. eight inches of management. Right. Even if it's one inch, it's still seven inches ball side right. or target side. That's true. So you know, I think that's that's where people sometimes think. You know, if, if they're catching slightly behind it, they think entry point or, or low point is there. It's Must not be entry here. point is there. Okay. Entry point and low point are, are very different. And that's you know to get us use of the bounces where it becomes so important to manage that that kind of bottom eight inches, as you like to call it. I mm -hmm. think that's a great it's just a good advice. misconception to get rid of because the stress of trying to pick a ball clean is probably the reason most people can't hit the ball clean. <laughs> Flinching and doing everything. Yeah. And, and, and the anxiety that most people face on even just a little basic chip, yeah. you know, and their hands, and then, and then they're getting ahead, and then everybody says, lean forward into it, get so the ball true. first. So it's absolutely the worst thing you can do knee, because... The knees are going... Looking in the mirror over here. <laughs> I'm literally looking in the mirror over here. <laughs> because what you're doing is you're just saying, yeah. with this setup, I have to be perfect. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. unless I'm perfect, I'm toast. Yeah. That's, that's All right. So Let's, uh, we're gonna, can, I'm going to pause the questions sure. till for about five, ten minutes here. Okay. What other shots are you interested in learning? Like, because I, I think with a little bit of practice, I think you could be, you could be good with that there. Just, so this, just changing concepts more than anything. That was very, very helpful. Yeah, one hundred percent. Let's move into. Why don't we just do the same thing for a bit, but go a little further? Like, okay. how would I hit a fifty-yard version of that? Let's okay. do that next, and Perfect. then you can move into some other ones. The uh, the feedback so far, or the feedback currently, is this is absolute gold. Anyone not watching this right now is losing out so much insanely powerful info. This is so awesome. That's lots right. and lots totally of really agree. great advice. Chipping off bare lies, i.e. no grass. Good. Yep, it's great. Awesome, really good. I think you're right in saying that a lot of this will be very different to what people have heard. And that that's we have the cool bare lies. We have actually the different turf conditions. <laughs> well, too. you can well, embarrass me with those, yeah? yeah. yeah. Save that. Let me get a little more loose. Okay. Before you embarrass me. <laughs> and I'm blading every yes. single shot. Okay, All so right. let me try to carry that into a longer Okay. Shot. I'm going to try to do So that obviously side. you're going to be somewhere in between. We're not actually going to have the hands as as neutral. So mm -hmm. a little bit more. Just forward. a little bit more. Face um, is now square, probably. Yeah, you don't need to have it for just a little bit back from there because okay. you're you're going to add like as you said it, but before like you could even put you know sixty percent back there. Okay, I'll try a little bit of that too. And so with that setup now, I'm just really just am I still trying to hit turf on a fifty yard shot? You can, yeah, for sure. All right, I'll try to be a little behind the ball with this one. That's it, boy. That sounded world class. It's different. Yeah. Whoa! It's different about that. Well, jazzy one, there. <laughs> but like, this is what this is what I find guys. interesting. It's eight thousand spin. I, I felt like I I hit it a little bit heavy, but it, yeah. that's not really the same as actually sticking it in the ground. So four four point two degrees down on it is a lot less than you normally are. It's more like seven normally. Yeah. Yeah. I think that weight back a bit, Gareth, is actually very... Which is absolutely counterintuitive to what you ever, no kidding, everybody... Yeah. Especially yeah. for you, it's different. You know, that's what you needed to do. Hands handle back a little bit more. Okay, okay good. I hit that a bit hard, but... It's got... Oh, whoa, a lot of spin on it. Yeah, 8,300 RPM. A big shout out to my man, Brandon, here, who's flipping between the... Uh, Brandon is the, the master. screen's at the absolute perfect time. It's really good. No, it's working so well. I love it. Like, well, when I watch the last stream yeah. back, I'm like, oh, man, Brandon was sharp on this. Really, really good. Just just because when, when you're setting up to it and Gareth's just nudging you slightly on the face on and then when you hit it down the line, 
Yep. If he ever decides Love he it. wants to move into a TV studio career, he's done. <laughs> very, very cool. Let's try that again. It's pretty. Yep. It's very, very different. I do feel less anxious on it. I yeah. kind of feel like I can just sort of... I'm not hitting them perfect by any means, but the results no, are all pretty good. No, not, not even close, but 8,600 RPM. It's a lot, yeah. On a, on a 50 yarder. There's a lot, of, yeah, the guys are saying some series just from 50 yards with that technique. So, you, I mean, we've got the green set on uh, sort of normal conditions here, and this is hitting and then just you know, mm -hmm. jazzing back a little bit. I think yeah. part of what, what is interesting with this setup is Ian knows um, really well that I don't deliver enough loft on pretty much anything down to a driver. Mm. And I don't think I've ever hit pitch shots with 50 plus. I think that setup is helping me, and probably the weight distribution is yeah, helping me actually right, leave a bit of loft on it yeah, versus trying to, yeah. trying to lean into it. Yeah, handle back a little bit more. Okay, about there. Good, perfect, yep. Yeah. It's funny, mm. like I've actually picked a few by not trying to Ooh. pick it. It's a wild scene, 8,700. Yeah, so everybody's a wee bit different, and that's why, you know, Hopefully you can take some of this information and kind of custom it for you, course, for your yeah. setup, you know. Um, let's have a little fun and see if we can get more. Okay, that's good. Okay, so you're gonna open up your body line. Body line, okay. Yeah, ball position is gonna go slightly back. Okay, Same Club fist, yeah, handle a little bit back. Okay, now you're gonna have to swing a little bit faster, faster. To, create, to create the same distance. Okay, Just faster. a little bit. I'm pretty much pointing the face at the target. Does or that even a little bit a little left left for you. Yeah. Okay. But still trying to feel some contact with the turf. Oh, yeah, yeah. Handle back a little bit. Okay, good. Oh, some sauce in that one, Matty boy. Yeah, nice. so we just, we just jacked up the spin over 9,000 there with that little adjustment. You're never normally that, that spinny with this I've one. never hit that much spin on a ball. No. If I go, well, it's exactly what we're talking about. Like, my best case scenario... Flinch just enough, pick it perfect. I think I could get it up to like, it's so true though, honestly. We've got people screenshotting all the different uh, setup positions. <laughs> so, like when Matty's moving the ball back and the way forward, like quick. <laughs> it, the replay will be available later for your pleasure. That's too good. So the reason we had to move the ball position back, uh -huh. so I need to explain that because it's really important. So when we open up our perception of where the low point is going to be actually. Moves out this way, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've got to move we've got to move the ball position back so we make better contact. Oh, okay. So if you're, going to move it, if you're going to move open, you've got to move the ball slightly back to get the low point correct. Otherwise, it's going to be too shallow. See, I think I, I do the opposite. I bet a bunch of people do. If I open to, to spin one, I go like this. And yeah. I put the ball up there thinking I'm going to like whip underneath of it or something. Probably. Nonsense. The contact's not going to be as good. Never. Yeah. It always yeah. fails. <laughs> yeah, so just... Okay, so here-ish. Yeah, a little more open. Touch back. And then, and then the nice thing about this is you're just doing your normal swing. Yeah, I'm not thinking about the swing, that's for sure. I'm just yeah, trying to handle think about, back a touch more. I'm just thinking about hitting the turf back here a bit. That I kind of actually chunked, but the result is not yeah. bad. A little high on the face, <clears> just <throat> probably more than anything there. But it's not going to hurt you. You still landed the yardage we wanted, you know? Goodness. I wonder if in uh, the north of England right now, we seem to have a lot of people watching this from north England if they're sold out of... Uh, Ping Glide 3.0s with that Hydro Pearl so <laughs> uh, finish with all that water oh that we get all the rain. That was a good one. What, uh, what have, you, have you found anything, Gareth, really with, uh, with your players? I know you've got some Ping players mm -hmm. who use those uh, wedges. A number of them actually, um, they're pretty territorial. Once a player finds a good club, you know, they're not yeah. really switching it out as much. Um, like uh, Jin Young Ko, um, who I coach, who's the world number one. She's got the same ones I have here, is right. the Glide Forge wedge. Mm. Um, just got a, a much cleaner look to it, you just know, a bit smaller. much more of a player's yep. type of a look. Um, it's got the very soft steel on it. So yeah. that type of feel, we just got better numbers off it. We did, obviously, as soon as that one came out, we tried it right away, yep. but the look and the feel of the other one just produced a little bit better feel for her. And then other players, really benefited from the new edge because they, you know, they've been ping players for a long time. They liked the shape of it. They liked the look of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it just suited them. And the technology with having that surface on it and wet conditions just made 
it was no brainer. Because yeah. Mackenzie Hughes had the the glides That's in his right. bag yeah. and he hit that wedge yeah. on the last played hole. Played great yesterday, didn't he? He played, played, played really great. Well. Um, and we've talked about this a little bit. Some of some of your players, you know, you utilize the full scope of technology with uh, with the companies to take spin away, add spin, Gareth. You know, you you're you're always looking at all things mm -hmm. uh, to give them that advantage. It's got a lot of zip that one. It's looking close, looking really close, pulling that uh, launch angle down. So moving that ball back and uh, cutting across, it's actually the additional friction. You're moving that low point out in front, moving mm. straight down the head is actually bringing the uh, the launch down here. Do you want about 30 degrees? It's 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 ideal to be honest with you. When you look at the best players in the world, that's what they that's all where they that's where they all launch it at. Um, I'll try to exaggerate this a little more. Gareth, uh, social media handle for you? Um, at Rafleski. R A F L E W S K I. Okay, everyone, get on and, uh, and follow, yeah, follow that. Gareth, Gareth is is always great at posting uh, on his travels with his players. And we have a new academy opening at the Sleeve Russell in Ooh. Ireland. Yeah, nice. It'll be opening in Summer. May. May, nice. Um, so anybody from the UK can come over and see us over there. That's awesome. So I think that uh, ball position is back too far now. Too far, okay. Yeah, I think I like it about there. Okay. Nice. And then don't be afraid to hit the ground. Don't open it too much because as you open it too much, what's going to happen is that ball's going to it's, pop up. So it's going to. It's not a bad shot. It's just. Probably not the shot that you'll want to see here. You so you've got to decide what's necessary, I guess, for the situation. Yeah. yeah. All we were trying to do here was, was show off and hit one yeah, with more no, spin, to be yeah, honest with no, you. for sure. But it's, it's cool because it's a lot of this is the opposite of what I've been doing to try to spin the ball. Yeah. Okay, more ground then. Mike Baker's asking, that's lovely, Matthew. Go in. Go in. Oh. Uh, Mike Baker's asking, <clears throat> less bounce on harder surfaces, generally speaking. Mm. We tend to find that, wouldn't we? For most, for most people. Can I? Can I? You may for oh, sure. Oh, enter. I, what, what was I, the, the? Did you say you had tour players with as toys? low as six, five, six degrees of bounce? Just to, they were talking about very firm lines. Uh, four. Down as low as four. Yeah. But that's four. So like um, one of my girls, Maury Jutanagarn, like an unbelievable chipper from yeah. Thailand. Mm. Um, four degrees of bounce on her 60, 14 wow. degrees of bounce on her 56. There you go. So she just chooses the one that she needs, basically. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's really and cool. So that's that's the most extreme I've ever heard that's and I love it. I love degrees. that four and fourteen just to give you full versatility. Yeah. So she can hit and she can hit spinners with both of them, you yeah. know, but if the conditions call for it, she'll just pull out the fifty six. Really cool. So um that this this is a board that I designed um that basically has no under padding on it. So it would be similar to Cart path, <laughs> yeah. right. you know. Well, I mean, you've seen those shots over the years when Phil hits it in the, you know, in the the hospitality stand, and then he hits that, you know, Hollywood shot where he gets all that spin on it, and you know, you, don't you even have need to, to be so that precise with your strike point, you know, when you're yeah. hitting off a board like this. So, with the firmer conditions, mm. we've got to shallow out the attack angle a little bit. Yep. But we can't use too much bounce. So shallow but less bounce. Interesting. <laughs> Sounds really great to me. <laughs> so, all right, take me through it. Troubled by this. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put the ball up in your stance. Okay. Up, yep. Yep. We're going to lean the hands forward. Are we making a little concession for the board, Gareth? Just getting get, uh, Matt, just to uh, just give a little bit more in the handle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And this is hard. Like, by the way, guys, this is super hard. Like, it's <laughs> it's mean to be honest. You yeah, know, doing this yeah. here, but Very exposing. Go ahead and just go ahead and make a normal shot. Okay. Am I trying to get turf with this? You can just make it normal. You don't even have to do it. Don't even do anything different. I didn't think pretty about how good far there. I was hitting it, to be honest. But so the reason that we have to we have to shove our hands forward from this here is that we need that club. We need the strike point to move up the club face. Right. And because the turf is so hard, if we left it here, we would hit. So we would barely hit on the oh, face. Okay. So we would we basically bleed a lot of shots. Yes. So we need the hands to be forward. By moving the ball up in your stance, what I've done is, so obviously if I have it back in my stance, the attack angle is steep back here. Mm -hmm. Having it up here, now it just naturally shallows it out without us doing anything. So compared to the stock shot, it's a little bit more shaft lean, but it's actually shallower. Yep, just okay. because of ball position. Gotcha. Now if we wanted to even exact, like <clears throat> if you were struggling with this, I'd just get you to open up a touch. Open up my stance a bit. Yeah, okay. hands, ball position a little more, and then hands forward, good. Looks weird, but great for this type of mm -hmm. turf. Beautiful. Good job. 
guys, I can't tell you how, uh, like, this is a hard board. Like you yeah. could, you could, like you could easily duff this one, and you'll hear the sound of it yeah, when you, you don't have the up. right technique. Um, See what you're saying though, because the last couple delivered loft has been about four or five degrees less than what we were, mm -hmm. and my angle of attack has been two or three. So that what you're saying is basically adding up with the with the numbers. Yeah. And even the launch on that one was pretty high for, yeah. for being how hard this board is, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But this would be a firm, this would be a, an ideal sort of setup for a firmer surface. Yeah, dead um, grass kind of thing. Yeah, or like, you know, you know, growing up in the UK and Lynx Golf, you know, is another right. situation where we'd have it. Or you get somewhere, if you play a golf course over here that just doesn't have great irrigation around, nice. you know, and it's, yeah. it's just like a rock. True. You know, so having it up and it's a tight lie. Mm. Um, this is actually a pretty good way to go about it. So no one should be opening the face on a tight lie. Unless, you unless you're going to use the heel. Yeah, right. Unless you're really super advanced. And that's, and that's a tricky one, you know, <laughs> starting <laughs> to use true. the heel to create a bit, bit of dig. You have to kind of know what you're doing at that gotcha. stage, you know? Gotcha. So balls up, hands are forward, and then you're just going to move through it. Good. You'll notice on these ones, they, they probably won't spin as much. It's yeah, actually going to have forward really roll. Okay. So more launch, less spin. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Because we can't really spin. Like, if you wanted to be cute, we could probably go with a little less shaft lean. You make your hands a bit more neutral? A little bit. And same we'll ball position? Yeah, we'll go same ball position, a little and, bit and open. Guys, we can really see in that board and that camera how far behind Matt he's hitting that full... Yeah, here, let me... You know, a full kind of... Uh, There's the ball. I don't know what that is. You know, what five, like. five in, four or five inches behind <laughs> Some the Some of them are ball. way back here. Yeah. Yeah, at least four or five inches. Okay, I'll go a little more neutral with the hands. Go down the grip a touch. Just pull that heel off the ground a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. give us a little bit of relief there. Okay. Okay, this will come out, should come out pretty low. Definitely hit that in a different part of the face. You see it the felt way? like it came up higher. Yeah. Yeah, we more spin on that too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good little trick. So would you say a lot of the time we have hard pan lifting the heel off? Yeah, a just idea? less friction. You yeah. know, let the, let the club move through the grass as much as you can there. By gripping down the club, it naturally does that. You can it go even it. lower if you want. So okay. now I can bring my hand yeah. up. Might need a little bit more swing speed just to get the distance here. But you see how low that comes out? That's it's generally very something very typical of very firm surfaces. Yeah, it's cool. And, and uh, what you said there, I think <coughs> is vital that, you know, the acceleration has to go up if you are going to play this shot. You, ha you can't just expect to put the same level of effort in and, and get the same result. No. No. Good after speed but up. But these are bit. these are awesome. Like by the way, these are really, like, really, nice really, quality. really cool. I hope it's coming across in if, the um, camera. Brandon, if you switch the other angle, mm -hmm. that T is where I had the ball. Is that pretty much where I'm entering, Gareth? Back here? Yeah, even a little this, further. Yeah. Probably so yeah, like yeah, here. <laughs> probably a good three, four inches behind. Yeah. You can see it clearly as well. Nice. Nice. Good. So this is this is obviously representing one type of surface. This would be this would be the opposite. Oh, this is the super the cushion. Yeah, this is like hitting off the cloud. <laughs> um, okay. So very soft, like a, a really nice bent grass in the summer where it kind of right. sits, it just sits up on it, you know? Yeah. It's just beautiful to hit off. Go ahead. And you could literally do anything here. Because <laughs> basically it's just going to forgive. The as long as you use the bounce, you could literally do <laughs> anything here, I should say. Okay, this so is wild. more neutral with the handle back where kind of yeah. where it was before. Yeah, Get go ahead, hit, hit wherever you want. It's very different. Very different. So this one will not spin as much either because the strike location because the surface, because the ground is so soft, yeah. right. is that club will sink further down. Mm. The strike location will start to move up the face. Mm. And because it moves up the face, we're creating less spin. So you've gone to some golf courses and you're like, boy, yesterday at that place, I was zipping them back. And today, okay. I'm, I'm not doing that. And that could be even the difference between POA mm. versus a really soft bent. Huh. You, so know? you can't play the exact same kind of shot if the surface is a different firmness. That's why making sure you're getting fit for the right wedges yeah. on the different surf condition, the turf conditions is important. And, and wedge mm. selection at this point becomes so vital because when you've got, I mean, this is effectively like the ball being perched up on, you know, the Bermuda or something like that. Yeah. You know, you go to that with a 62, 64, lay open your 60, 
you, your face angle, you've lost all the face. True. So your you know your likelihood of hitting that high in the blade, losing all your energy output, Just popping up, getting you know no spin off it is so high. Mm. So it doesn't matter how good the technology is, whether you know it's a, mm. a, a company that sort of addresses the vertical CG of the wedge. Right. At that point, you've just selected the wrong wedge. You don't have enough surface area no. to hit at no. it. You needed to go down to 56, 54, Absolutely. even, extra even yeah. 50. Hmm. You could go down Definitely. to 50, open it up four or five degrees. Now you've got 55, and let's say you've got 10 degrees of bounce on your 50, yeah. and you go five up, you go, you go five more degrees of bounce. Mm -hmm. So you Let's go 15 degrees of bounce. Yep. So now your strike <clears throat> location should effectively come down on the face. So I've got a 50-12. Okay, that's good. Is that okay? Yeah, so this actually, this will be interesting. Yep. So if we open it up just a touch, because we're trying to still hit it 50 yards. Right. I don't think people do this shot enough. No. It's a little open, same hand position though. Yeah, same, handles back even a bit more, because we don't want it to come out too fast here, because okay. it'll come out pretty fast. Right. Okay. So now you got that nice spinner Gorgeous. that you were not able to hit before with the 60. Lovely, cool, bring, eh? the, bring the, the launch down. So we're sub 30 there, we're 29, we're coming in at just under 7,000. That's really cool. So the extra really bounce is nice. for giving that, that turf a little bit. Yeah. It's less of a, a tough shot. Mm -hmm. Handle back a touch more. That'll be the hard thing. It's literally every lesson. Handle back, handle back, <laughs> handle back. I'm such a bad habit. <laughs> well, you know, I think everybody is because we're so conditioned because if we practice more full swing than short game True to have our hands forward. That's mm -hmm. just, and like we've, like I was taught, that's how I was taught to play golf. Right. Mm -hmm. It's kind of thin, but yeah, I see what you're saying. You get, you, you get can go down and actually, old. let's go, let's go down and hit this one because it is spongy. Yeah, I didn't try to um, the turf let, there. Let's go and hit you know a couple inches behind this and make sure that we're doing it right. Open a touch more, handle more neutral, good, and then let's hit a couple inches behind. Mm. Definitely some earth there. Nice. Yeah, that's different. So eh? it gives us a little bit more feedback. That's it's a lot of spin actually. Yeah, not that long. Pretty good because those are the conditions. Those are the <coughs> changes that you know I'm doing on tour with the players is that I'm like, okay, today when you've got this in between yardage. Let's go 50 mm. when we're pitching instead of 60. So now we're going to have to really work hard at our distance control oh, okay. from those in-between distances. That's really cool. Yeah. And I like then, that one. And then we got kind of, this is, this is one here. You might, hopefully you can see it in camera. You may not. Um, so there's a cross hatching. There's a center line and then obviously yeah. yeah. one inch lines. I think, I mean, is there, as long as, you know, the viewers have got a nice high quality screen. We can see it pretty see clearly it. on this one. Yep. They're about, they're about, yeah, they're an inch apart. Can, in fact, Matty, can you, can you hold it up to one of the camera? Whatever is the best. That camera looks like it's got really good focus on the side one here. It'll be, it'll have to be further away though. Oh, oops. This one will be the easiest one for you to see. How's that? Uh, let's go. There we go. So tilt it that way. Okay, guys. So can you see the lines on it that are spaced out in one inch increments? So that's, that's designed to sort of show your entry point, entry point. Yep. relative to ball position. Okay. So I've went back to my 58 again. Yeah. So yeah. we'll go back to this sort of the Just a basic stock, standard. stock one sort of ball position in the middle, um, hands kind of neutral. Good, nice little shot there. I think I put the ball about there. Yeah. So it probably got, I was gonna say yeah, so if you go, you go <laughs> into the green obviously to make yeah. a mark. Yeah, so. <laughs> Backwards. Take two. Take two. Okay, so if we go right gotcha. there. So that's. So it'll get darker. Yeah. That way, yeah, yeah, gotcha. And then you smooth it that way. So on a 50 yarder, um, what would be, we were talking earlier, you know, a couple inches would be nice. Before. I think about two inches, two inches you know, from, from most of the testing that I was able to do, about two inches seemed to give me the best strike, give my players a really good contact. So that's way back here. Yeah. Two inches. Yeah, you don't have to try to do that. That's where it's literally that's just going to turn. Yeah. Now, because the board is, you know, because this board is sitting up this high, you're going to need to get down at least that amount to to get that exact height. Okay, is that a little better? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be four. 
It's there, at least. So that's three and a half, at least. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. It felt like a good shot, too. It was a good shot, like 7,200 RPM. Gareth, an old, uh, an old friend from uh, Dungannon, uh, Craig Talbot. Um, says he remembers you from his, he was in the work in the pro shop or something. Oh, like that. nice. You were back home, nice. so he says hi. Yeah, Dungannon was, uh, that's where Darren Clark grew up and played oh, his really? golf. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. uh, my parents uh, still live there. They, oh, own a, they cool. own a restaurant there. And uh, just a quick, quick one minute on you. You played, uh, you played some golf. Uh, what, did you ever play Challenge Tour? Yeah, I did Euro Pro Challenge Tour. Euro Came over, Pro played Challenge. Canadian Tour. Yeah. Um, yeah, best experience, you know. Feeling is always the best experience mm -hmm. that you can ever get, you know. Yeah. But being able to go out and do it is, has been vital for me to teach the better players because I know what it's like, you know, putting your money up, flying somewhere, yeah, teeing it up, knowing that, you know, you got to make a paycheck. Yeah, yeah. that's true. So those, those experiences are, have been great for me, you that's know, awesome. working with better players. Absolutely, 100%. And these, uh, these boards that we're working off right now, Catalyst Golf, uh, they will be. They will be available. Not quite yet, but they will be. No, no. We've it's been six months. You know, getting the right depth and the right yeah. textures and mm -hmm. everything, because obviously we have to. Like, there's a lot of shots that need to yeah. go into this to get it figured out, uh, but they will be coming pretty soon because we've got pretty much all of them yeah. figured out. Now, now you'll be able to go out, and this would be great if you're stuck indoors all mm -hmm. winter. Mm -hmm. Like something like this is just going to be a game changer. To know that, and we were working on this Ian a little bit before the yeah. cameras went on. Yeah. To move his strike location or his, his entry point from four and a half inches up to two inches, mm -hmm. when he goes outside, he's going to feel like a rock star. Everything's <laughs> just going to feel so it's good. So easy, yeah. Yeah, but if you don't know how to move that there and you don't have any feedback. Yeah then, you know, it's very difficult. Hmm. Yep. Catalyst Golf, and you've already got some products for putting, and you, you've got some products on there on the website right now. I do. Are we doing putting today, too? We are. We are. Oh, yeah. Okay. Not live, but yeah. Not we'll live, yeah. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll record. Something. Yeah, so we have, um, we have a ruler that I designed. It was um, years and years of, you know, going and buying rulers, and I said I need to make my own because mm -hmm. um, they always warped and bent and stuff, you know. Um, so there's about six exercises with it with the ruler is just a ruler like yeah. <laughs> like but the way it was designed and used and the things that I do with it with the tour pros every week yeah. that's kind of where the best information is mm -hmm. you know yep. um, and then I've got um, cups um, that you throw down on the green to put on and, and one is dead weight so the ball will travel about six inches past and it'll sit in the hole oh, and then okay. the I'll show you these in the other videos yeah. the other one will capture the ball if it's a speed of 10 inches to 18 inches. Right. Huh. So the ball will sit in the hole. So if you're working on your speed, optimum speed, yeah. it'll sit in the hole. If it's traveling faster than 18 inches, it will not stay it'll in. Come out. And if yeah. it's nine inches, it'll roll back down. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, good. That's pretty so, cool, actually. Yeah, it's really cool. Smart, yeah. So, be, you know, to be a good putter, you need good capture speed. Mm -hmm. And to be a great putter, you need great capture speed. Yeah. Yeah. And this is basically doing both. Oh, that's cool. Good stuff. But this is kind of fun because I think it's showing people that you can hit three, four yes. inches behind. Quite comfortably. <laughs> now, if we, le if we leaned that handle forward and we were actually on turf, you, you would chunk them all day yeah, long. Yeah, like the you... leading edge digging in back here with no bounce mm -hmm. engage is a disaster. And, and the thing that I think people should find interesting is that I haven't done anything with this swing. No, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> how, many, how many times have we talked about angles, you know, in this whole thing? None. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's basically Nothing. all set up, isn't yeah. it? Mostly. If you do a good, like you're a good player, if you do a good enough job at setup and understanding your tendencies, then you can, you can manipulate the body in certain From ways there. to get whatever you want. Right. And then it's easy because you don't have to change. Yeah. Yeah, no, true enough. What wedge is that, Matty? Is that still this is still my 58.8. 58. So that's kind of fun. It just that's great. It yeah. just that gives you. It just gives you. I don't know if you can see on the board there, but you, you yeah, can you see. Well, here I'll take it over to these guys. Yeah. So, um, we had the ball. You tell me, guys, if you can see this. Okay. How's that? Uh, so point out where the where the, the. So the ball was about there, yeah, up there, and most of the strikes entered so about. So we're there. we're sort of, yeah we're I'd about say three, three ish three to four notches behind. And inches, those so. felt quite good to be honest. Like those yeah. felt like <laughs> felt like pretty good strikes. Which puts it in perspective, like you yeah. just aren't picking the ball at all where I thought it was. But that, but by testing all of the different boards, you start to understand, and, and doing it inside is brilliant because we can control all the conditions, because you yeah. just, you can't, if you go to a golf course, 
That's literally what you get. For sure. Right. But we can control all of these different conditions mm -hmm. and learn what setup we need and then what fit yeah. we need from there. Because then you'll have this in your memory bank and you'll remember what you did off your cloud one and your firm one and mm -hmm. then you just take it to the golf course. And 100%. that's a bit like club fitting as well, to be honest. Yeah, you know, the, the application of the signs has to be a skill. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're taking your ball flight outside and, and you know, your, your turf conditions, your strike point, all the rest of it, you're going to have to manage that. That's part of playing the game of golf. But yeah. if we can standardize that and a fit very much like we're doing here, mm -hmm. you know, and you're, you're, you're giving Matt a full repertoire of shots to go and approach all these different lies and, mm -hmm. you know, turf conditions and stuff like that, then that's the skill is to know yes. which one to pick and when. Exactly. Because a lot of the, the questions we got yesterday were, well, what about indoors? Mm -hmm. You know, you can only ever do a fit off grass. You can only... You know, it's not true. No, it just isn't true. I mean, some you might actually be able to get better feedback doing stuff like this. There's only one turf outside that day, and yeah. Gareth's got three. You've got three here. There's yeah. all number of combinations you Definitely. could actually practice. That's why I we decided to do the location in Ireland because mm -hmm. at the Sleeve Russell we go indoors. Yeah. We get all our data. Mm -hmm. We get all our information. I walk outside. Chipping Green is right there. Mm -hmm. We That's do cool. that. We walk right on to the academy course and actually do the training on the academy course. Nuts. And then we walk back inside if we need to do more data. Uh, and it rotates, so it's that's really it's smart. training. Like we're really training the player, not just here's an hour lesson, okay, <laughs> work on this here. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, good you luck. You know, good luck. You're not gonna get better. You no, need to take sure. this information, like Ian was saying, take it out to the real environment, mm -hmm. test it, come back inside, see what it is, go back out, test it. And it's obviously going back and forth and back and forth. It's going to give you that real learning and that real substance. Canadian Open this year was so cool because I was out with Jin Young and she's on the golf course mm -hmm. and we're looking at different shots. And she goes, so this shot here, I'm going to do this, this and this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she goes, OK, so in the bunker, I think the sand is doing this. So I'm going to do this and this. And that should give me the shot I'm looking for. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Because she's what? remembering all this stuff you guys have done. She's applying it. It's just months and months and months and months of it. Yeah. But now she's looking at the shot, and she owns all the information. Mm -hmm. there, it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't belong to me anymore. She is fully capable of looking at any different lie and determining the shot that she needs. And now that's when the real, you know, well, that's when you get to world number one and make over say, three million bucks yeah, playing golf any on the women's tour. So. <laughs> so just on talking to her players quickly, who's... Uh, who have you admired the most from a, a short game mm. perspective in, in your time doing this? I think I grew up just loving Savvy, yeah. to be honest with you. Imagination. Um, and the way he played, you know, like I teach a lot of my play, like obviously we're doing the spin ones and the fun ones. Yeah. But when I'm teaching players, the shot that I want them to hit is one that chips on and it might bite a little bit and then it just has like a putt release. Mm, yeah. Because that will allow the ball and allow you to ju a judge landing to release. Versus and, trying to go hit, stop dead, spin a bit, and like who's going to be? Yeah, nobody's. That. No, no. I want players to have the ability to do that, but yeah. that's not. So from from, I just love the way Savvy just chipped it on, and it, and it just released. So that's mm. what I love for a standard pitch shot. Obviously, with better conditions, course in better conditions. You know, the the course conditions he would have been playing, the grass would have been higher. Yeah. Right. So he wouldn't have created the spin, and maybe he might have created the spin more now. You know, True. but equipment and everything. Savvy was the guy I, I always loved because everything was, you know, changing. I watched mm -hmm. him, you know, I watched him at the Irish Open every time he came home yeah. um, there and just in the bunkers and just the imagination that he had and the mm -hmm. different shots, you know. Even KJ Choi, I watched KJ Choi, which was very cool at the Canadian Open, and he hit a couple of shots out of the bunker, and, and this is probably nine, ten years ago, and I just was like, I, I, don't, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you know, that's amazing. And then really? it got me thinking, how do you do that yeah. there? So he hit one out, and he like chunked it out, and it kind of released up to the hole. Next one landed right beside the hole. Next one landed past the hole, and he sucked it back. Jeez. And I'm like, wow. And then I found out from people who had caddied for him that he used to spend, you know, upwards two, three hours in the bunker every day. Really? Wow. And he just, it was just something he wanted to master. Hmm. And he, when he played these shots, nobody else knew how to do them, but he was able to do all these different shots that's crazy. because he decided, hey, this is something I want to learn. And that's, I think, when people are looking at their short games, what type of shot, would, like, instead of just thinking short game, what type of shot would you really like to get good at? That's yeah. a good point. So that you can go and say, you know what, I want to master that shot. I want to get really good. I want to be really, you know, happy. Once I get out there, I know I'm going to be able to attack this shot. Even the guys at my head pro at my club, he, I showed him, you know, neutral hands and back, 
and he gets so, like he, he might lay up and he lays up in the rough and he's so mad because he's got a 40 yarder and he just wants to handle back and zip the <laughs> life yeah. out of it because he's got really good at it, yeah. you know? So once you get into that situation, you end up laying up in positions which used to scare you. Now you're like, okay. um, this is pretty cool. Yeah, because you have the understanding of how they actually hit the shot. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, how are we doing for time? We're an hour and four. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking there's obviously a ton of stuff we're going to do for segments. Yeah. Is there anything else we can do in the lesson that you think is valuable before we... What about gapping? I think that was something that people, sure. that mm -hmm. people struggle sure. with a lot. Um, one thing I think would be really cool to do, I'll show people how I like to get people to do their gapping. That's a great idea. Sounds so, good. What wedges do you want me to get? Uh, that one's good to start with. Sure. So I only do three positions. So halfway back, yep. where my arm is straight and full. Halfway back, straight arm. So straight arm is in wherever your arm reaches. Pretty much parallel, right, right about so there. So arm perfect. parallel to the yeah. ground. And Could halfway three back quarter is this. Right there. Oh, okay. and, and mirroring the same on the follow through. Gotcha. Those three positions with that wedge uh -huh. will give us three yardages. Right. Four wedges, 12 yardages. Mm. So now, if we ran through, we're not going to run through every single one of them, but if we ran through that there, you would see something like 45, 52, 58, oh, it gets 60. Oh, like five, six yards. You'll see a pattern. And what, what we do is, um, I, I did this with the pros. I literally put a piece of paper on the back of it, mm -hmm. and I write in half, three quarter, mm -hmm. full, and they all have yardages stamped on it. So what they do is they'll come up to the green, and they'll go like this here. <laughs> that's hilarious. And that's teaching them how to get really good at that yardage. Huh. Because the thing is, is if you go, okay, well, I want to go five o'clock, six o'clock, whatever, all the clock face thing, it's too hard to repeat. But okay. if I only work on here and three quarter and right. full, I'm going to get really good at those yardages. Because you still have enough clubs to, to make yeah. five yard gaps. Yeah, we can change the club just. And we well, can have a yardage with each of the different distances. This will be good for me because I suck at this. Perfect. So let's do, fit, let's do the half one to start off. Okay. Do you want me to move the green or is that okay? Where no, no, we got the yardage. We know where it is. Unless the guys want to do that. Okay. Would so you, what do you want? Uh, do you want 50 this? yards should be, it's, okay. it's, it should be good. For me yeah. anyway. so just, just a half wedge standardized without the shaft lean that we had before. We're going to just. Right. So take the shaft lean away mm -hmm. and I'm going to, the club is going to be parallel to the yeah, ground. Yeah. And then just through, through the same position. The same. Okay. There you go. And again, yards. don't be afraid to hit the ground. Right. <laughs> I was just thinking, I picked that one real nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's great for everyone to, I think, to hear about reaffirming don't be afraid of the ground because how many people go out and work on these shots and they work on, you know, clean contact and, and not hitting behind it and, so and not hitting, you know, yeah. so just using just the the club properly. Squeeze it out there, you know, really, the really trap it. I mean, you, really, you <laughs> waste like three quarters of your session trying to make nice contact and you never actually work on the yardages. No. Should I keep my stance pretty square? Yeah, I like, I like square. Yeah, we could talk all day about different... I know, I know. Like... <laughs> but I think for, for people really just trying to get their yardages down, you need to standardize standardize your swing yeah. so yes. that you only have a couple. Mm -hmm. You can't have right. 10, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you've basically got two, yeah. half and three quarter. The other one full is we know, we know how it's to do that. It's just a normal swing anyway, yeah. Yeah. Can so I this should probably, what, be 37, 38? The bet, yeah, what was that last one? 37, yep, yeah, 37. <laughs> Somewhere between 33 and 37 have been most of them. Yeah, perfect. Is that your answering machine? No, how do we get rid of the... Um... We've got... Uh, oh, some spam. Al yeah. Al Alyssa, is we've it got... funny this time or is it not that funny? Oh, she's hoping to go out and practice later today. <laughs> <laughs> she's hoping to go out and use some of these techniques in our uh, I back garden. Is, I don't think this is spam. No, well, that's, that's definitely it. Oh, yeah. Sexy live chat. Ready for yeah. sex live. Is... Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys are right. Uh, so go... Do it here. So good. go, go there. Ah, but those are real questions. Some of them. I don't know what's happening. 
Uh, Listen, hide user on this channel and remove. Do hide user because then they can't come back in. The spam's getting more advanced. It's like the name is clearly spam, but then now the messages are legit. It's <laughs> <laughs> too good. And too smart for us. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do your three quarter swing. Gotcha. So what do you? Well, let's estimate that was. Let's say thirty five yards on. Yeah. Yeah, like I think that. it was pretty pretty good. Is the stance width okay for like yeah, all these? Yeah. Yeah. Just whatever's comfortable for you. If I if I need to adjust it, I'll adjust okay, it. Cool. So I'm now I'm going about yeah. arm to parallel. Yeah, and then through to the same position. Nice swing there. 64 yards. It's funny, the, uh, as soon as that other channel was offered up there, the, the viewers have plummeted. <laughs> <laughs> They've all disappeared onto this other channel. Well, they'll be back in about eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a serious taper off and then a spike. Yeah, I can compete with that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I know. Oh, none of us can. The information's good, but it's not that good. <laughs> uh. Hold on one sec. Um, yeah. Matty, I might steal your, your production knowledge here just yeah, to no get worries. back to where we were. You want to hide some more? Uh, no, well, okay, I think they're all gone, but oh, just to okay bring now? it back to where. Oh, yeah, sorry. Minimize this. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, seven, okay, that felt like I hit that way too hard, but I guess it wasn't crazy, crazy. Would you have a prediction based on 36 being my starting one? What mm -hmm. do you think? Probably, yeah. I like, I like 65 or 70, 65 probably. Or 70. Do you find this is pretty standard? Like, obviously, there's varying levels of club head speed. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a guy who swings my driver 100, should I expect similar yardages in the short clubs because I'm making these sort of regimented swings? Yeah, you It's should not be. like my friend's going to hit it 20 yards shorter than me? No. Okay. Um, the thing about it is, is you're trying to keep your tempo the same. Obviously, if you mm -hmm. increase your club head speed, you're going to hit it That's further. different, yeah. You try to keep everything. And I almost like a little bit more of a brisk swing. Like, I don't like, because I think sometimes, one? You know, kind of, yeah. because, you know, it's too hard. How are you going to predict that there down the road? I want something that's, you know, 8 out of 10. So it has some, it has some tempo to it. Yeah, you know, you're not, because I think when people get into these short shots or in-between shots, they generally decel. Totally. Or they make such a long swing on the back that they're like, oh. And then it's like a, they slow sounds, down, you know? Sounds familiar. So, That's literally exactly what I, I do. Yeah. The same thing. So I would rather you have a nice zippy three-quarter and yes. then just make your kind of normal pass at so it. So make your, your distance. distance being controlled by mm -hmm. length of backswing. Okay. I just lengthened that. Sorry, Thank you. Yeah, no worries. It's a 75, sorry. Done this uh, long enough for that to know. We have a super chat just in from Palm Spring Spinners. Love just it. Nice, uh, nice sentiment. Hey guys, great to see you live. Have an awesome week. Thank you. We hope you have an awesome week yeah. and you're enjoying the, yourself. Uh, enjoying this live with Gareth. I think there's, there's so much good stuff. I mean, there's going to be so much. People will have to watch this a few times, I like, would, you I know, would in order imagine, to maybe yeah. break it down and yeah. t take some notes. I mean, you know, I'm joking yeah. with some of the people in the chat here, but. Um, you know, be serious about that. Take some notes. And yep. Get like I could them. honestly, we could we could sit here and talk for days. Um, like I have, I have about 90 different shots. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get through about wow. 10 today. Uh, hopefully, yeah, you know, that yeah. would be good. But yeah, there's just so I love that. many, it's just, it's the combination of 10, 12 years of doing the same thing. Well, I think the good thing about this is obviously we have the full day with you now mm -hmm. and hopefully we can schedule a day in the summer because then we outside can, would be nice. Come down to can, London. Yeah. yeah that, like we can basically great. take all this and show what Gareth does in the outdoor setting. Plus obviously wedge fitting stuff outdoors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ian, is that screen, one of my lights just pooped out. Is, the, is our screen okay still? Yeah, you're right good. Yeah, down, we're, we're down yeah. the line right now. That light eats batteries. Okay, so let's, that one was fat. Otherwise it wouldn't have been so bad. Nice. I love the zip on that one. It had a nice More, acceleration yeah, to it. Think of what you said. You and know, just hit it harder. Um, so 67 in the or 68 in the air. That's a little more like it. Yeah, we'll do one more, and yep. then you'll, we'll do just what's your full out? Do you know? With a 58, it will go about 100 yards. Yeah. But again, that's probably based on a bit of a long, yeah. languid swing that isn't ideal. So yeah. What's interesting is a lot of the tour pros don't actually like to hit their 58 full. Yeah, I don't blame them. I don't know why. I shouldn't do it either. You know, they they. What we noticed after testing is the proximity to the hole and the ability to hit our yardage actually went down when we 
when we hit full swings. Is that right? Yeah, I can see that because it's less less variance with these yeah. controlled swings. So we just knew that, okay, if we have the right yardage and we're bang on, yeah, it's mm. okay to hit it. But you know, if we have to push it, generally, mis sense. contact changes, spin changes. So I think I'm probably averaging 66, 67 carries. So I like that. 36, 66. Yeah, and, and so let's we'll do a full up. one. Okay. Now, when I go full swing, what what of the setup stuff we've talked about should I carry? I think you're going, this is more like your normal golf swing, so you don't need to even worry about so changing. Don't think about that stuff You know, much. the only thing I would say is maybe be careful that we don't shove the hands so far forward right. because so then I'm gonna, I'm, I get we're, we're de-lofting because I, I want this yardage to be kind of 36, 66, right. maybe even 90 So when you start de-lofting that, that's, when I'll, that's why I can hit it 100 yards? Yeah, which... shouldn't be hitting it 100 yards? No, you shouldn't be. Okay, gotcha. That's what I figured. Well, we don't want to anyway. No. So you would just switch wedges? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'll go a little more neutral with my hands this time. Ninety-two, yeah, good guess. Ninety-two. So you working up to that yard is now about ninety-ish. Yeah, so yeah, we changed the setup a bit so that the the loft wasn't so gone on the on the club. That okay. one flew ninety. Yeah. It felt like a. That's nice. Full swing. That's a, it's a nice yardage, you know. I like. I'm, I've, uh, I've never actually tried that before with a full swing, like mm -hmm. working on my... You're going to add shaft lean anyway, so let's just not overdo it. You know, and then we've got a little forgiveness. We've got a little bit of bounce forgiveness. You know, we don't really need it as much yeah, good with point. this full one, but nice to... It's there if you need it. Nice to have it. So skinny. Yeah, similar yardage, though. But, you know, it's, you know... It's three feet from yeah, it off. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's totally fine. And that's the whole idea. You know, when you're working to become a better wedge player, it's a lot more about your distance control. Mm. You know, because you're not going. It's not really a direction game at that point. You no. should be hitting it no. within a window. But if you're a jump, if you get jumpers or it's coming back, you know yep. that's that's your adding or taking off loft. That's a lot of like. Remember when we went to um, Craigburn, and you were saying to me, "We're hitting to the wind a couple of times." You're like, "Work on that." Mm -hmm. I'm I'm doing the opposite. Like if anything, I was just continuing to spin it more, 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 and I couldn't I couldn't control the ball. Like I could land it similar to where I wanted, but then remember just ripping off the green yeah, yeah. like three or four times. That's a good one. We should do that one. Um, uh, flighting it. Yeah. Sure. Flighted wedges. Yeah, definitely. That's, definitely. So taking all the spin off it and flighting it. That's then. that's a, a very. That's kind of a fun one, one to do mm -hmm. for people. And we'll these feel some, really uh, good. Some here. people in the uh, in the questions, Gareth, asking about sort of. Maybe having the yips or being a bit yippy on some of their pitches. Is there some mm. kind of good stuff that, that could help them? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of things. I think, I think the biggest thing I would say for someone who is getting yippy is obviously make sure you grip down the club. Yeah. Make sure your arms are long. Oh, I got one thing for you. Mm. I brought this today because I figured most people need this. It's a good question. I think a lot of people can yeah. benefit so from that. You can be my, you can be my guinea pig. Good. So, are you a good what? swimmer? <laughs> I, can, I can swim, yes. Okay, great, great. Well, you won't need it today. I won't drown. But um, we're going to put it on. Trail arm. Trail yep. arm. Up, up here? Yep. Better for fit, Matt. You've been doing the curls. <laughs> <laughs> curls for the girls. Can't put these on anymore. There we go. That's perfect right good. there. Okay. So, you're going to go ahead and take your, take your setup. Okay. So, just go ahead and take a normal little half swing. So it keeps the length in his mm. trail arm so because I think when losing it, I think when you get into being yippy, you know, it's not so much that you're yippy at the ball. Yeah. It's that as you're coming back, oh. this has bent so much and it's bent in the wrong direction. Mm. So now as you're coming down, like obviously look how high you are. So it has to go down and then there has to be the opposite. That's really interesting. So. I want to look at this here. Like often, people with the yips, if you give them right hand only, uh -huh. yeah, because they have to keep the arm straighter. This radius becomes exactly the same every time. You don't see someone going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. You know, so by making sure that radius stays the same, we really can control the low point, and a uh, little floaty thing there that you use for swimming. Trail arm swings are, are great. It's amazing how good you can pitch it with with just using that trail arm. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I can see what you're saying, because even when I, I'm, I'm right hand strong, yeah. so anytime I've been given that drill, I can't do it, but I think I probably lose the length of that arm too quickly. Yeah, so we're gripping down, and we've got long arms. Right. 
and by having long arms, it allows us to maintain mm -hmm. the low point and also maintain the radius between the club head and us. There's and then that there. stops us from having this that's right. reaction that's really here. That's smart. There's been lots of people talking about that with the kind of Stricker, Steve Stricker sort of method and, and you know <laughs> how good he is at controlling and, and lengthening that low point. Yeah, yeah really absolutely. Smart. And especially if you've got anxiety over these shots, what I would say is start off, and you don't even have to do anything long here, but start off and just make like a putting stroke. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just get comfortable making like a putting stroke and then add some length to it. And as you start to add length, you'll have something that'll be able to put. And take the 60 out of your bag when you're doing this here because okay. generally it's got less loft on it. Mm -hmm. Generally, we'll, because of the way the club looks, we're going to want to do that mm -hmm. more. You know? You want to take loft away because it looks like there's too much. Yeah, and I want to take away the forces because there's a lot of force through the hands okay. that we get you know, into the ball. Yes. So we get a lot of this. So like you were saying before, like the eight iron shot, yeah. you know, hands here, mm. because the face doesn't look, it looks so different that there's no need to go yeah, like that. So we take the force out of the hands and then try to work your way back up the loft. When you were doing that, it kind of just saw the, the arc of your club. That creates a lower, or sorry, a longer flat spot. When yeah. you take the bend out of that trail line. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Because obviously look how low the club is to the ground here. So yeah. as it's coming down, it can touch down, slide along, and then up. Because yipping it is, is having your margin for error yeah. tiny, obviously. Yeah, so now I've only got probably a flat spot of only an inch or two. Yeah, and then you build in the memories of hitting a million yeah. bad shots. So people see this here, people see this and think, okay. oh, I flipped it, you know? Right but it's a reaction of what something's gone all wrong here. Huh. Because if this was long here, I'm not gonna go. Yeah, it's an opposite you know, reaction it, to that. It, it, you wouldn't do that. Um, why don't we hit like a couple, I just wanted to show people with the 54 now. Yep. If I try a couple of those shots, just curious how they I, are. I, I like can, that idea, yeah. We can move on after that. Yep. And so then if we 30, have time, we can do the flighted one. It's, for sure, yeah, it's, afterwards. It's, it's super fun. So 35, 65, and 90 were the three yards, yeah. if anyone's... Yeah, so what you would get, honestly, a bit of tape on the back of your club yeah. and write them on. That's crazy. You know, it's the easiest thing Mikey to do. Mikey can laser etch them into people's wedges. And it, <laughs> it, it, I'm, I'm honestly thinking, like, so we're designing these custom labels for bands, all right? of our shaft bands and, like, creating, like, a wedge shaft band. You know when you get, like, I'm thinking, like, when you get Scotty, and you yes. get you know, the band and a score team, they, so and, and like a silver metallic, they'll do like exactly. a Exactly, and then just write it on. Yep. They'll do all the specs. And, and I always put it on the, on the back end of my wedge here, mm -hmm. so it actually never catches my mm -hmm. eye when right. I'm it's, looking at it's it. It's like a shaft label, essentially. Yeah. It's on the underside of it, so yeah. you never see the numbers. But until you train your yardages, mm -hmm. you know, it's stupid. Like, like no, but the, it's, if, the if number one player in the world sitting going like this to <laughs> wedges, you know? I'm yeah. like... Hey, it works. it's good enough for her, it's good yeah. enough for me, I'll do well, that. Well, because if you're under pressure, you're going to freeze up and you might forget all that kind of stuff. 100%. All right, so let's see how far... The... Uh, any yardage you guys want, specific yardage? So what would you think? This is a 54. We're going to probably be looking about, let's say 10 yards more. So this more? should fly 45 then? Yeah, we're, we're going to guess. Okay. And I'm going to make the same setup as I've been making. Yeah. 54, now we're 6. We might be a touch more, but we'll see. So to here yep. and through and try to feel a little bit of turf. Yeah, this will be a fairly shallow swing as mm -hmm. well because we don't set our hands nearly as much as a three quarter, With you know? The left, yeah. yeah. Close. Probably not the perfect contact there, but it felt hands to hand, down the grip a tiny bit more yep. because we need to, that heel is just coming in a little bit and the gotcha. contact's just not as good. Felt better. The ball actually kind of jumped off the club a bit more. And also, you know, it has a little bit yeah. more zip there. <clears throat> James has a magic ball. He says the S grind uh, would work for Matty in the 54 and the uh, 50 in the 58. I well, have S grind in 54. That's exactly what you've got. Yeah, and it? I have M grind in 58, yeah. and I have. F in 50? F, which is, yeah, so down in the, the gap wedge, that's, that's the full soles all they offer. Mm. Yeah. And then you've got the S with the slight trail edge relief on the 54, and then you've got the toe heel and trail edge and the, the M grind. Gotcha, perfect. Yeah, the gripping down is extremely important in these half wedges because yeah. your lie angle, you'll get, in, you'll get too much heel dig mm. yeah. in this here. 
So we need to take that heel off the ground and just right. allow you some forgiveness. So I'm group at what, like an inch is Yeah, good? yeah, you're going to have to find I, I put mar I put marks on the girls' clubs and the players' just clubs. Just to indicate it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like just a little, little something faint that they can do it, that they grip. Mm -hmm. Or we'll use, you know, the golf pride that I have on mine in midsection. Hmm. So yeah. they might have three different grip handle positions mm -hmm. for different shots. Okay. It sounds a lot to be talking about this, but, you know, as you get good at it, it yeah. becomes a lot I can simpler. see it being automatic, yeah, for sure. Nice strike there. Yeah, that's, I tell you what, there's a real, uh, a real interest and in sort of benefit when you do that shot. When you grip down, you lift the handle, lift the heel, yeah. uh, you, you strike it way better. For sure, you can hear it. You can hear you can it, definitely the hear shot's it. coming out. Looks, you know, the, looks like a, a kind of just a nicely flighted little mm. half I tend wedge. To, I tend to yank those shots, yeah. and now I can see probably why the heel is getting involved. Yeah. Closing the face a little bit, and I love the way it hits. It's got a nice mm -hmm. grab, but it's just got a tiny, really yeah, a like tiny 5, trickle. Five thousand spin is going to release a little bit. It's not going to. It's a perfect little yeah. shot. If you needed to zip it, then we could just open the open our body lines. Gotcha. Okay. To add a little speed, but we're not going to do that. Let's go three quarter now. Mm -hmm. Three quarters. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. What what sort of uh, what do you have within your stable of players in terms of the ratio of field players to players that like a system? Hmm. How what do they like to use? Great question. You know. It, it can actually go cultural as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I have a couple of players I work with from Germany who are very, you know, very by the books. Yep. I have other players who are very field based. I, I would say be careful not to label yourself as too field based because yeah. mm. you can be that. ignorant to the information. I you know, because um, I, I often say to people, oh no, I'm feel, I don't want to know anything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you want to be uneducated, that's fine. Yep. I'll give you a couple of tips. Yep. But I want to know, I want to know this information. Like, so I, I come, obviously, I did engineering at school. Like, I like math, I like numbers, but I like to teach mm -hmm. right. on the other spectrum. That's, that's a good assessment of how you do it, because it does seem like you know all that back end stuff, but you're not throwing it at me. Yeah, so I think it's very important that for me to be able to execute these shots and for players, but it needs to be very, very simple. Mm -hmm. But we really need to dig deep and know mm -hmm. the information so that we can actually move forward. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like people always say, if you can't explain something simple, you don't know it well yeah. enough. It's true. Yeah. You know, so make sure that whatever your shot you're trying to play, don't say, well, I just kind of do this and feel it. You know, I'm like, it's very hard to be able to repeat that. Right. But sometimes when I have players and I'm like, after we're trying to do a shot and they know the feedback, I'm like, and they're trying to explain to me and they can't explain. I'm like, that's okay. It's right. okay if you can't explain. Show me. Show me you know how to do it. And as long as they show me they know how to do it, I know that they actually understand it. They don't need to even articulate it to me. As long as what I've said to them, if I say to hit the shot for me and you're like, uh, I'm not, sh show me. And if you can do it, I'm going, okay, great. He understands. It's more of a learning pattern thing. So I think people, you're right. People go two extremes. But yeah. there's a spectrum in between of people that like a little bit of information and... Yeah. It's up to you to decide what they need. And my players, I have to I have to behave in a way that my players will actually respond. Mm -hmm. So for one player, I might need and I'm probably an I'm definitely an introvert by right. nature. I have to be mm. a lot more talkative, a lot right. more of engaged, a lot more like holding the conversation because they might be even more of an introvert than me. Right, right, so they right. need me to be the one doing all the talking. Other players want to be the one that just keeps going and going and I need to listen. Interesting. So it doesn't matter what information I have. If I can't connect with the person, then my information's lost. Yeah, no, I love that. That's really, really interesting. So when you're finding coaches, guys, and you're looking for people, you really need that you really need that connection because as soon as you get the connection, most coaches have got great information. There's tons of guys that just know and so that much explains stuff. explains why on tour, like the coaching, the pairings, I should say, they usually tend to be people that get along quite well. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to be someone no one likes or can't talk to. It no. doesn't matter what you know. No, absolutely. So this should probably go, let's say, I was 65. Before. Yeah, no, you're going to be close to 80, I would imagine. 80-ish. Okay, gotcha. Hit the Duncan's ground. asking, Gareth, uh, it's not it's not legal to have numbers on your shit on your wedges or anything like that. Reminders, not at all. No, it's like a yardage book, basically. Right? Yeah, yeah. No rules against that. 
No. We get a little more ground this time. That was that was me trying to pick at it. A yeah, bit. yeah. I think I think you know there's much more room there than you actually give yeah. yourself credit for. Nice shot there. That's better. Lovely. It's so about 80. Good guess. Yeah. Yep. Yep. See, if I can guess what your yardage is even before you've hit it, mm -hmm. how good are you going to be when you actually practice it? Yeah. Right, because you're, you're just crunching. You know the lofts and everything. Yeah. You know what it yeah. should be. So if I know that, you're going to be you're gonna be dynamite. So if you can change your proximity from being, you know, 25 feet mm. to 18, 19 mm -hmm. feet, you're going to now change how many opportunities you have for birdie. Because that's sure. what I'm thinking when I'm talking to players, especially good players. Yeah. We're trying to buy opportunities. Mm -hmm. The more opportunities we buy for making converting to birdies, yep. the better the score is. Right. The more opportunity when we miss the green that we can lower our proximity to hole, the more chance we convert to par. Yeah, just based on the percentages of putts made, right? We just run, we run the math, we run yeah. the numbers. We're just trying to buy opportunities and buy better proximity for our chip shots. Because huh. if we do that, the math works out, we're gonna shoot lower scores. Yeah. So let's go with the full one. Should probably see one yeah you're 90 yeah i think that's probably pretty close five ish kind of fit i mean so between these two wedges four yard four degrees of loft mm -hmm. 15 yards seems to be like yeah. the pattern okay catch oh. <laughs> uh, yep nice. 107 so that's cool that you can guess it too, you know, because the handle position is slightly different because you would have been more like 115, 20. 120, yeah. yeah. And not in a good way. Like yeah. there'd be weeks I come in and say to you and he's like, where do you want the green? I'm like, I don't know this week, to be honest with you. Yeah. It could be 125, could be 117. Yeah. But now I'm understanding like the loft mm -hmm. delivery mm -hmm. aspect of it. And hitting the ground beforehand, you and know, and allowing that one or two or three inches beforehand to... Right. Yeah, to actually get the strike up mm -hmm. the face of it. And that's not an example of that, but... That's interesting on a miss hit here what this one is yeah still still it just was a it was more of a yeah kind of yeah. a bottom low picky no oh, sorry the shots again all right let's do one more and then we can hit a couple flighted in the wind we can turn some wind on eh, Ian? Oh after God, this indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. that's better So hopefully we're going to notice with those patterns, yep. um, with all three wedges, is that yep. or all three different shots, is that they're all bunched nicely together. Yeah, the the front to back dispersion is something that I'm I'm not good at, and that's about as consistently as I've ever seen a ball kind of. If you were doing this here on a regular basis, you'd be dynamite. Like you, whatever yeah. your handicap is now, you just take at least a couple off right away. You got to rep, you got to yeah. repeat it, obviously. But the more you can, because you only learn those three swings, mm -hmm. and once you know those there, then you can sure. start to dabble in. The opening the face, the closing right. the face, the body setups, all the little, because now we're taking two, th like I'm setting up players going, okay, I want to see your half swing mm. in a one degree or two degree open position with one or more two degrees of loft. Now we're pulling off four yards. And is that also to like add spin at certain times because yeah. the green needs to be whatever a pin we is, wanna, it is? We want to change launch. Mm -hmm. We want to change mm -hmm. more spin. But if we have a baseline, then we can start to layer. And then we lay, mm -hmm. same with the short game. Short game is all about layering. Yep. Get a basic shot, add another shot, add another shot, yep. add another shot. It's less and they daunting all kinda, in that way, isn't it? Yeah, like it and they all complement like each other. Right. You know, and then you start to understand, okay, all these different layers. Because people come to me for a lesson. Oh, I want to do a chipping lesson. I'm mm -hmm. like, what do you want to learn? Yeah. You know, like I could teach you any of these 90 shots, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Where do you want to start? <laughs> you know, so we have, to, we have to do there. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, that was amazing. And then I'm like, would you like to know how to do this? And they're like, yeah, I'd love to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, come back for that one. Would you like to know how to do that? Yeah. yeah. And then it just keeps growing and growing. And then we keep checking up, make sure that they're still doing the same. But the more they get excited about the short game and the different shots and the different options and the different ways to set up, yeah. the more they get out there and practice it. Yeah, you actually have desire to do it because you don't feel like you're going out and embarrassing yourself. Same thing with putting. You know, putting gets super boring, as everybody knows. If you don't know what you're kind of working on and the information. It's going to be really interesting with Gareth mm -hmm. on putting because I'm, yeah. I'm, I go hit a few putts and I, I intend, like, I have an hour today I'm going to practice. I mm -hmm. do it for, like, 10 minutes and I go eat lunch because I'm yeah. bored out of my mind. Not that I've learned anything, but, like, I'm just done with it. So those yardage were 30, 36, yep. 50. Yep. Uh, 70. Full, or, was so it? 58 was... 35, 65, 90. That's, That's right, yeah. Yeah, those are nice yardages. And it was like 45, yep. 80, 
80-ish, yeah, 80, 80, yeah. and then that's about 105 in the air. So see the way the gapping in all of those are kind of like, moves. they're all kind of doing this here mm -hmm. all the and way if up. If you layered on the 50, if we were to guess, this would probably go 50. Yeah, you might have a couple of double ups then. You might get a couple of double ups, but one will be flighted, one will be higher launch. It'll double up on the low end. It could, it could double gotcha. up on the low end, yep. but what you'll find is you should have a gapping through your bag through the 35 mm. all the way up to like 125. And you would include a pitching wedge in that? For sure, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you like to pitch and hit half shots with it, yep. it's gonna come out super low with a half swing. It's gonna be more like a chip and run. So condition dependent, like if you're playing yeah. links, obviously they yeah. play a ton of those. But you're gonna get, you're gonna have a full transition through your bag. Uh -huh. So now you never have to, like you just go and you look, okay, this one, all right. And there's no thinking, yeah. you know? Obama, when he was in office, had two suits. He had a navy and a gray suit. And the reason he had that is he didn't want to have to make any decisions because there's only so many good decisions you get in a day. That's a good little story. So if you get out in the golf course, you want to make as little decisions yeah. as possible unless you're forced to make a decision. It's the same thing with the way you practice. Mm -hmm. You want to have your practice regimented because when you get there, you don't want to be showing up thinking about what you're going to do because you're just using up more energy and That's more true. mental capacity. Yeah. You want to go out, put your time in, leave. That's how you make better use of your hour that you may have in a week. Yep. Yeah. Otherwise, you get out there and you're like hitting a few. Oh, do that there. And then afterwards, you're like, I don't know if I accomplished <laughs> anything. <laughs> Sounds awfully familiar I, to me. And, and, and this, is, this is not even just the average person. This yeah. is the tour pros do that as well. Yeah. So we have to kind of set a schedule of what could be five drills. And I say after these five drills, you tell me when you get bored of these. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they get bored of them, I add five more. And five more that are exactly complementing the skills we're trying to work on, but they're five totally different. Because yeah, you're going to get bored. Mm -hmm. yes. So you, the more you can layer and complement the skills and the practice, because it's the, the information that we're gathering here is amazing, but mm. the, the way you use it afterwards is actually where the real learning comes. So to comes. apply it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, uh, we're Flighted. an hour and 36, so I think we, you know, let's, let's, let's kind of uh, cut it there. Sure, yeah. Um, no we're we're going to film a bunch of videos today, so yeah. let's... You, Okay, we'll do that flight one for one of your we'll videos too, because I think yeah, that'll do that as a video. Because I think that'll be um, something people will love. I mean, it's super, it's super fun to do. Good. Definitely. Yeah. Because then we it. can control this, some conditions and that'll very, be, that'll yeah, be very true. Yeah. yeah. Sounds fun. good. Yeah, this was great. This okay, was really good. Um, guys, um, hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. That one could have been on for for quite some for time. Sure. Yeah. Um, couple of things. Our second ever podcast was with Gareth. Was it number two? It was. Yes, two number three. two. Yep. Number two, 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 two yeah. One, sure. uh, yep. So yeah, please make sure that. there was there was again some great information in, in that one there. Yeah, was. Um, so yeah. if you haven't heard that one in the podcast, go back and uh, check that one out. It was one of the more popular ones we did actually. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Good. Anything to add? How's, I don't your, think how's so. your swing feeling? Uh, swing's feeling good. Yeah, good. did doing some work. Larry's over in the corner watching. The real reason I had to cut that off there is because if you keep getting any bets, I'm going to lose you to Monday qualifiers. <laughs> <and> <laughs> we're not going to be doing any more Monday filming. And we're going to click finish now. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, guys.